Hi dear friends, myself Danya Divagar. A warm welcome to my channel Shades of Literature. A big thanks to all out there for subscribing my channel and also for leaving your valuable comments. So today I'll be doing the fourth chapter of Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth which is titled as On National Culture. Since this chapter is a quite big chapter, I'll be doing the first part of this chapter in this video and the next part will be done in my next video. So before going into the chapter, I'll just give you a brief gist of what I did in my previous video and I did the third chapter. The third chapter was titled as The Trials and Tribulations. So in this chapter, Fanon speaks about national consciousness. He says that there is a crack in the very concept of national consciousness. And who is responsible for this? Fanon says that none other than national bourgeoisies are responsible for this. Again, in the second part of the third chapter, Fanon idolizes the national bourgeoisies and he says that a true national bourgeoisie should discard his city life and come into the midst of the indigenous population and he has to live amongst the indigenous population. Also, Fanon says that a national bourgeoisie should impart whatever knowledge or whichever knowledge he has acquired from the Western universities. Towards the end of the third chapter, Fanon says that nation building is not that easy and there are no shortcuts to build up a nation. At this note, he ends his third chapter. Now coming to the fourth chapter, which is titled as On National Culture. Here, as an introductory note, Fanon speaks uh, about the mission of the underdeveloped countries. The mission of the underdeveloped countries has always been to fight against colonialism and also open new paths for new struggles. He says that in a post-colonial world, the colonized fought heartily against the colonizers. If at all, the colonized failed to grace the international stage it's purely because of the international situations uh, were very much different then and it's not because they were not champions they are the real champions and also Fanon explains about the two contradictory worlds and they are the pre-colonial world and the post-colonial world so to which terms can you attribute pre-colonial world to and what is this pre-colonial world by the way Pre-colonial world is the world before colonialism and you can relate the pre-colonial world to terms such as beauty, ethnic, raw, pure, rich in culture and tradition, natural, etc. And now what is this post-colonial world? The post-colonial world is the world left by the colonizers and we are living in the post-colonial world now. So to which terms can you relate the post-colonial world to? You can relate the post-colonial world to alienation, displacement, struggle, trauma, etc. So Fanon speaks about these two terms till the end of this chapter. Now coming to the first point of the fourth chapter and that is the pre-colonial culture cannot be reclaimed. Now he argues, Fanon argues and says that the recognition of a national culture and the right to exist has been the right of the intellectuals, the, the colonized intellectuals. Why? Because they are the cultured class. He also says that the politicians, they always place themselves in the present, whereas the colonized intellectuals they situate themselves in the past. Fanon argues and says that the colonized intellectuals, why do they want to go back into the pre-colonial culture or into the pre-colonial world? Why? Are they like uh, oblivious of what is happening around them? No, they know what is happening around them and they know the risks. And what are the risks? The risks of falling trapped in the Western culture. So they know that if, if at all they fall into the Western, into the trap of the Western culture, they will not be able to go back into the pre-colonial world. They are very much aware of that. And therefore, in order to avoid the, the Westernization or the Western culture, they just want to go back into the pre-colonial world. 
and the colonized intellectuals they disagree with the recent history because they just want to retrace their old culture and want to bring back their past at this note he ends fanon ends his first point now coming to the second point the second point is that why the colonized intellectuals wanted to retrace their past history as well as their past culture uh, fanon is uh, elaborating on the point uh, why they wanted to retrace it uh, we all know that colonialism not only abused and exploited the colonized people but it also deprived the colonized people of their very existence of their very culture and their very history so fanon uses certain terms to describe the situation through which the colonized uh, intellectuals or the colonized people underwent he says that the colonizers destroyed distorted and disfigured the culture of the colonized people he also says that this served as a reason for the colonized people to return back into their pre-colonial world and their lost culture so this is the explanation which fanon gives for his second point he also says that the for the colonized people this kind of attitude from the side of the colonizers was almost like a hammer at their head so their whole culture was destroyed their whole uh, tradition values morals everything was destroyed by the colonizer now coming to the third point the colonized intellectuals took culture to the continental level now what is this continental level how can culture be portrayed or taken to a continental level fanon describes this he says that the colonized intellectuals they could trace the past but they failed to trace the cultural past he gives an example also for this he uh, takes africa under colonialism africa was considered as the den of savages uh, where uh, which, which is cursed which is hated and which is evil to the rest of the world or on a continental level africa is portrayed as a den of savages which is hated cursed and evil this is what fanon says so uh, are you able to relate with africa i can give you one more example uh, in order to relate it much more uh, easier we can take the very uh, own nation of ours india how the britishers portrayed our own land our very own nation to the rest of the world india was colonized by the british britishers for a, for quite a long time and britishers they portrayed india to the rest of the world as a land of snake charmers it's a very intriguing or it's very thought evoking uh, point they portrayed our land as uh, the land of snake charmers a land where uh, elephants just uh, run around on the uh, common areas or on the common roads a uh, land which is not suitable enough for them to live in or a land which is uh, very much savage this was the image portrayed uh, by the britishers or by the colonizers of our very own nation to the rest of the world now i think it will be easy for you to relate it africa and our own very nation now what did the africans do in order to right this wrong or what did the colonized intellectuals do in order to correct this wrong uh, image portrayed by the colonizer they just went and embraced the black culture this is what fanon says and the colonized intellectuals they just embraced the black culture so that they could take their own culture to the continental level and they also wanted to get uh, free from the shackles of the colonial power this is the third point now coming to the fourth point fanon says that the black culture cannot exist on continental level rather it can exist only on national level this point is very much contradictory to the third point where we saw that uh, fanon saying that culture can exist or taking culture to the continental level here fanon says that black culture can only exist on national level we will see why he is saying that he explains this uh, by Uh, saying that the negro literature as an example for negritude that's how he begins he takes negro literature as an example for negritude and says that the black writers or the writers of uh, the negritude they didn't even go beyond their african continent 
so they used to live there itself and they used to interpret their feelings and about their land and their lost culture now uh, when these people or uh, when the negritude when it started expanding its roots throughout america uh, the black culture was formed and the people from uh, who belonged to this black culture people from countries such as ghana senegal chicago etc they started writing literatures he also says that the people from the black culture they shared similar experiences and similar thoughts whereas the african people and the african intellectuals for both these two classes of people for them the culture was a dead end why because the african people they are the normal colonized people they are indigenous population whereas the african intellectuals they are little bit more elite kind of people they are learned people for them culture was almost a kind of dead end for them now he explains or he says that african cultural society was established in order to safeguard in order to protect or in order to elevate the uh, african culture and when people who embraced this black culture and when they started writing from every nook and corner of the world a new genre was formed and it is termed as diasporic literature so in this diasporic literature all those black people started writing their feelings about their land and their experiences he also gives yet another example uh, he just uh, takes two sections of people fanon takes two sections of people the first section uh, he refers to two writers richard wright and um, langston hughes who were the 20th century afro american writers he, he compares these two people to yet another two people uh, named as leopold singer who was the first uh, president of senegal and kenya to the former prime minister of kenya now fanon says that the experiences of these two sections of people were very much different when uh, taken on a personal uh, ground it it was very much different but when it is taken or when it is looked upon at a point of racism the experiences of both these two sections of people were almost similar now here uh, there is a thought evoking point you should think about it both these people like Uh, the writers as well as uh, the, pre the president and the former prime minister their experiences were very much similar when it came to a point of racism they were under colonial power they were colonized and they were considered as the other now what is this the other i all i had already explained this term the other the other means all those colonized class or the colonized people or the indigenous population has been termed as the other by the colonizer and the colonizer is us okay so uh, uh, these two sections of people they are considered as the other and henceforth fanon says that a black culture can only exist on national level and it has no existence on the continental level it's very much true also when we uh, practically think about it we all already know that like uh, the colonizers attributing certain terms to certain sections of people like asians Uh, or the black people the negro why because they think themselves as an elite class or themselves as white and they regard all the rest of the world as colored so there itself we have contradictory terminologies or contradictory ideas coming in and therefore it's very much Uh, good for a nation if it safeguards its culture at the national level rather than taking it to the continental level this is what fanon uh, tries to explain in his fourth point now coming to the fifth point fanon uh, the fifth point which fanon says is that the concept of a nation now what is this nation he says that uh, the nation the very concept of nation itself is a uh, little weird he he says that the people who just don't have a nation uh, are without an anchorage 
he uses this term he also says that people uh, undergo various psychological problems they are almost in a traumatic situation when they have uh, to choose between identities they are forced to choose different identities this is what fanon says he also explains this by giving an example uh, if a country like algeria it was colonized by french and a, co a colonized person from algeria will have to take up two identities such as that of an Algerian as well as that of a French and when you move on to Africa the, the African person from African continent will have to take up the identity of a Nigerian uh, and, and also that of an English so uh, the identity uh, the identities differ and the people are torn between these two identities and therefore these people the colonized people or the indigenous population will find every means to get out from the clutches of the colonizer and they will trace their history and their culture this is what Fanon says and the concept of nation has been uh, like he says that the nationhood or the feeling of nationhood uh, a person will, has to have that identity or else he'll be torn between these two identities now coming to the sixth point uh, here Fanon uh, traces the three developmental stages of a writer in the first stage, the writer tries to uh, prove and assimilate himself into the white world and here comes in uh, the points or the images of surrealism and symbolism. Uh, now coming to the second stage, here the writer wants to go back into his pre-colonial world and once he travels back into his pre-colonial world, he understands that he is an alien over there, he is almost like a foreigner and he just cannot retrace his lost culture. He almost feels uh, alienated in his pre-colonial world. Now coming to the third stage, the writer becomes a fighter and starts writing national literature, combat literature and revolutionary literature. Now Fanon says that the very nation exists just not because of the colonizer and the colonized. The nation exists and not because of the culture. A nation exists just because of the struggles of the colonized people against the colonizer and it's not because of the of the culture that a nation exists so it's purely based on the struggle which the colonized people fought against the colonizer it's because of that a nation has its existence and not because of the culture at this note Fanon ends his sixth point now coming to the seventh point, Fanon says that uh, how a colonized intellectual address their own kind. So uh, the very language used by the colonized intellectual uh, to address their own kind has been the language of the colonizer. They used to uh, address their own people through the medium of art. Uh, they used to address their people and the language used by them was the language of the colonizer and now when these colonized intellectuals when they uh, try to interpret uh, uh, their uh, communications through the medium of art they almost felt as a foreigner because they were uh, feeling that kind of alienation in their very own land. Uh, Fanon also says that the colonized intellectuals they speak about nationality but they look at the third world as exotic and this is the main reason why the colonized intellectual is out of step. Uh, he says that he explains this by saying that culture cannot be simplified and therefore the colonized intellectuals are out of step they are very much uh, aliens in their own land and they just cannot relate to their past experiences or their past world or their pre-colonial world because they are aliens to their world they just don't know what had happened in their uh, previous world so they just cannot relate uh, and therefore Fanon says that how can you rectify the situation we should have a unifying national culture only then this uh, situation can be rectified and at that note he ends his seventh point now coming to the concluding part of the first 
uh, part of the fourth chapter Fanon says that a poet or a writer if at all uh, he wants to write a piece of uh, literature or a piece of art first of all a writer should understand his own uh, alienation Fanon uses a term also by for this he says that the colonized intellectuals are mesmerized by the mummified fragments now uh, the very uh, uh, nation or the very country which is colonized is fragmented after colonialism it's all in bits and pieces so the alienation the the, the concept of alienation will be predominant over there and now the writers of such colonized uh, countries they will have that alienated feeling amongst themselves and they will not be able to relate with their own people because of these fragmented feelings which exist inside their heart so Fanon says that a writer should be able to come out of that in order to relate with his own people. A writer should always open windows into the future rather than focusing on the past. Okay, he can go retrace his lost culture and retrace his past history all that's fine but at the same time a writer should be able to open doors into the future as well and for this what is needed a unifying national culture is needed and Fanon says that uh, fighting for one's own nation is almost like attaining a liberation so he says that decolonization or freedom can be attained only by fighting or only by uh, national struggle and a feeling of oneness and nationhood should be there in a colonized person or in a colonized intellectual uh, he also says that uh, culture it's not in mere words or in gestures nor it's a mere folklore whereas a national culture is the way a colonized intellectual tries to describe justify and extol the feelings of liberation or the ideas of liberation at this point Fanon ends his uh, concluding uh, part of the fourth chapter the first section of the fourth chapter uh, so I think I have uh, made it clear to all of you the first section of the fourth chapter the second section will be dealt in the next video uh, until then stay safe at home uh, take care uh, kindly uh, subscribe my uh, channel and also post your valuable comments uh, please don't forget to ping on the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video until then bye bye